There's a very strong belief in the gardening world that anything organic is good for gardens. It is rarely that black and white. I think some organic fertilizers are great for the garden, but they are not all of equal value. And in order for you to select the good ones, you need to be aware of some common myths about them. I'll discuss four of the biggest myths in this video. What are organic fertilizers? I use a very general definition that includes just about anything that is dead organic material. Compost, fish head, seaweed, manure, composted manure, various meals like alfalfa meal, mushroom compost, vermicompost, and even blood meal. My comments apply to all of these. Myth number one. Organic fertilizer produces better nutrients than synthetic fertilizer. This idea that nutrients from an organic source are somehow better than the nutrients from a synthetic source are so very prevalent and yet so very wrong. This is not new science that we could debate. Chemists have known this fact for 200 years or more. The nutrients from both sources, organic and synthetic, are identical. Neither plants, nor microbes, nor a lab can tell where they came from. Myth number two, organic fertilizer feeds plants. This is a myth on several levels. First of all, fertilizer does not feed plants. It simply adds nutrients to soil where plants can help themselves as needed. But that is not the main problem with this myth. The more important point is that organic fertilizer is not yet decomposed enough to provide nutrients. Plants use very small nutrient molecules like nitrate, phosphate, iron, and calcium. They might use a bit of sugar, and there's even evidence that they can absorb some amino acids. But these larger molecules are not important for plant growth. Plants use the simple nutrients the most. But organic fertilizer has almost none of these simple nutrients. They do contain nitrogen, but it is tied up in large molecules like proteins and enzymes. Phosphate is tied up in molecules like DNA and ATP. Magnesium is inside the chlorophyll molecule. And the list goes on. Plants can't use any of these things until the nutrient molecule is released. So a fish head might be very nutritious in the long term for plants. But today, if you put a fish head beside your plant, the plant will starve. We use the term finish compost, but that's an incorrect term because that compost is not finished. Compost continues to decompose for years after we apply it to soil. During that time, it slowly releases nutrients. But in many cases, the release is too slow to provide enough nutrients to grow plants. This is especially true in fast-growing environments like containers and vegetable gardens. Will your tomato plant hang on for the next three years and wait until the manure releases enough nitrogen for it to grow? Of course not. If organic fertilizers applied in normal amounts, it does not provide the nutrients fast enough for plants to grow. Now, as you build up your soil and you add organic material every year, over time you do reach a point where there's enough organic matter in the soil to feed plants. But if this is a new garden and you've just applied that compost, there just isn't enough nutrients in it to grow good plants. Now, a simple solution in the short term is to use some synthetic fertilizer for this summer's growth, but also add the organic for long-term soil building. Myth number three. One type of organic fertilizer is better than another. Is sheep manure better than cow? Is fish emulsion better than kelp meal? What about vermicompost? Many people rave about its qualities. And then there is the latest fad, banana peels. They are claimed to have magical properties. Let's take a step back and try to understand what these organic fertilizers really are. They are all plant or animal material, mostly plant. Let's face it, even animal manure is mostly undigested plant material. 
plants, animals, and microbes all look very different to us when we look at them with our macro eyes. But when we put them under a microscope and we look at their chemical makeup, we find more similarities than differences. They are all made up of cells. Cells have cell walls and cell contents. They all use DNA, proteins, and enzymes. Their main energy source is sugar. Plants can make their own sugar through photosynthesis, and animals eat plants to get sugars. Animals tend to have fats, and plants have oils. But both oil and fat are very similar chemically. Did you know that the chlorophyll molecule used by plants to catch sun rays and the hemoglobin used by animals to transfer oxygen are very similar molecules? Their structures are almost identical. The main difference is that chlorophyll has a central magnesium molecule and hemoglobin has a central iron molecule. The point of all this chemistry is that on a molecular basis, Plants, animals, and microbes are very similar. So then, why would their decomposed bodies be so different? Well, the answer is, they're not. Every type of organic fertilizer is a bit different, but they are chemically very similar. And most have about the same MPK value. Blood meal is an exception. Claims about one or the other being superior are mostly wishful thinking. Myth number four, organic fertilizers have magical properties. Each type of organic fertilizer has its followers. Vermicompost is very popular with some, and they think it has special ingredients that makes plants grow better. Others love fish fertilizer and swear by it. Still others like seaweed. The scientific data shows that all organic fertilizer is about equal, as far as growing plants goes. None of them have been shown to contain magical molecules that make them better for growing plants. Now, seaweed may be the exception, but the science on this is very new and not yet convincing. It certainly doesn't justify the high price of seaweed. What about the banana skin? Well, it has no more magic than any other organic fertilizer. Don't believe the hype and claims about magical properties of one product over another. Virtually none of these claims are supported by research. Marketing people and product enthusiasts are just spreading myths about their favorite material. By now you're sitting there wondering, well, which one should I use? Well, here's my suggestion. Buy local organic fertilizer. The less we ship this stuff around the country, the better for the environment. Buy it in bulk. That usually means you're paying a much lower price for the nutrients you're getting. Don't worry too much about picking the right one. Pick the one that's local and you can buy at a lower price. That will be your best option. Now, if you want to learn more about nutrients and soil and how all of that affects plant growth, have a look at my book, Soil Science for Gardeners, and there'll be a link right here.